So I am back yet again with the Marvel Legends Hasbro team, Mr. Dwight Stahl, Mr. Dan Young, and of course, Mr. Ryan Ting. How are you guys? Thanks so much for taking the time today. Doing great. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah. Right, good to see you. How was Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest for you guys? Everything seemed like it went off without a hitch. It was very enjoyable to watch. Yeah, it was a two-day long extravaganza. I hope uh, I hope Marvel fans enjoyed that Thursday night rundown. We we seemed to take up a lot of the time, but we had a lot to talk about. So that's yeah, it was. no, I think it was fun to kick it off. Kind of start with the questions. So we'll, you know, Marvel three seventy five, the retro series. Will we start to see more bigger kind of figures? Will we see any play sets, vehicles, anything like that? Any big plans? So for, I think for the time being, as you've seen with the Hulk, and I'm trying to remember who, who the rest is in for this year, kind of like the old, in the old days, everyone was more or less the same, the same height. So I think yeah. so the key characters will kind of stick in that format because we like to have the standard six by nine, which is that Kenner-esque dimensions there. But okay. I think we are, we are looking at things that, like you, like, like you mentioned, play sets, vehicles, or like really, really large figures that would that would necessitate like a different kind of package, but still be retro retro themed. So yeah, more more to come. We're just really happy that these figures are hitting retail. I've been out to a bunch of stores over the past couple of weeks, and if I see any, there's like one left over that somehow got mangled like on the shelf. So that's why no <laughs> one wants it. But like everything else is is sold out. So I, I hope the fans um, love it. I hope we get some new fans in as well who who think, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, and then we get to keep churning out both new characters and the new expressions in this scale. Yeah, I think for me, I'm a big fan of old Toy Biz Kenner stuff. They just hit that real nice nostalgia. They're not meant to be anything more than that 5 POA style. And I think that's really utilizing the old school looks is where that sweet spot of Marvel really plays in. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the new wave too, Bullseye, especially Bullseye and uh, all the ones that you guys showed off. So very cool. Shout out to uh, JTC, who always does the artwork for the card backs. They, they are always on point. So shout out to JTC. I feel bad opening up. I <laughs> Got to get two, man. Oh, man. Yeah, well, they, I've, I've had it to where this year, no saving anything. Boxes, nothing. Everything has to be open. But I do save the, the artwork for those. <laughs> They're easy to stack. You know, to put them away somewhere. Uh, as far as, let's say, you know, the COVID era with everything last year, things seem to be getting mowed better this year has that really changed the landscape for legends at all for you guys i noticed with let's say the most recent x-men wave a lot of digital renderings on the back of the packaging but the figures are very crisp very clean just that extra little oomph to them has uh, have you seen any big changes or has it been like scrambling to kind of to kind of get things going or more or less easy i think i think the first couple of months of last year march and april were pretty nightmarish just trying to figure out so because it happened so quickly you know we were in the office yeah. on what a wednesday and we received a corporate email that said friday peace out everybody and you're just kind of <laughs> like what what and they're like you know get your equipment and we'll see you reason. we'll see you whenever so you know <laughs> it was like you know it, it was like any of those crazy like movies everybody's running around with pitchforks yeah. and porches <laughs> screaming through the offices grabbing uh, it was like it was like hasbro was being looted by its own employees people have <laughs> chairs they're like wheeling chairs out mo computer monitors and yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty crazy. It's like, you know, you're looking in your office, you're like, did I remember everything? It's like, do I have all of my, do I have all of my Pantone books? Do I have everything I'm going to possibly need? We all just kind of flew out of there and then we got home and as well as doing the job, many of us had to figure out where am I working? How am I working? I don't have an right. office space in my house. This is the far end of my living room. You know, it's just <laughs> kind of like, you know, it's like, okay, if I can make a station here, you know, how much, uh, Am I going to be bothered by all of the crazy things that come to be an outside? How much of that stuff? And then, oh, I got a deco question. And then you're like, oh, I can't go see Kristen. Kristen is 40 miles away in some, you know, in another town. And you're just kind of like, okay. And, and, you know, we all, everybody, I think, adapted really, really well and really quickly to the, the Teams and the Zooms and all the new technology. But it was... And while everybody supported it and jumped on so quickly, it still took all of us 
you know, a little while to figure out how to do things. So there were piles of hiccups for those first couple of months and, and stress about how am I reviewing samples? I can't get to the office. No one's allowed to go to the office. You know, everything's shutting down everywhere. What does that mean? Because for our engineer and me and for Ryan and Dan, we're like, yeah, yeah, we're doing, we're doing great with pictures and, and it's given us a lot of good insights on things, but these are the samples of the toys that the most critical fans view and, and collect and put your hard earned money in. So we are like, well, you have to have those things in your hands. You can't review everything through images or you're going to miss stuff. And when we're asking the most vo vocal of our fan base to support, you know, a very large collection and a very expensive collection, it's like, it's yeah. gotta be on point. So there was a lot of like stress and, and nightmarish months in the early stages. Now, I think it's like everybody's kind of settled in for the most part. And there's obviously hiccups and problems still that you you, you realize that you might not have thought of before. But uh, I think we've all gotten so used to it. And I'm very proud of our team. I think everybody's done, you know, an amazing uh, job, Herculean effort of figuring out how to, to handle things. But, uh, um, you know, it was definitely a lot of bumps in the road for those, uh, those early early months of the pandemic. Yeah, I will say this is, is talking about bumps in the road and all that stuff. The fact that you guys still manage to get the amount of product out that you do, I mean, holds a testament to what you guys are capable of. So that's pretty darn cool. At the same at the same time, we kind of talked about it during the PulseCon panel in September when we started showing digital renders for the first time to do a reveal. The company had been had already been moving for a while to to a digital approach. And we mm -hmm. kind of talked about it, how, yeah, all those paint masters are now done digitally. I mean, they're still yeah. reviewed in person and those, those conversations with the team are, are important, but um, in terms of like the physical medium, like the, the model artists aren't painting samples anymore. So I think it, it would have been even like crazier and harder if we were still physical paint masters, the, the move to digital yeah. has been accelerated. And you mentioned the back of packaging, you'll actually notice we don't do photographs at all anymore. Uh, it's either an illustration, uh, most likely an illustration, a piece of studio key art, or like in the cross cell with the little faces and the boxes and the builder figure, those are, those are digital renders as well. So mm -hmm. the, the company has completely gone that way and it actually has um, kind of helped with this remote working situation where everyone is in different spots. I mean, I'm one of those people, I still love the look of taking a photograph or looking at figures, but we have gone the digital age. And like you said, especially in this day and age, it's a whole heck of a lot easier and looks to be the only way to kind of get things going and getting it going fast. So as far as the reveal of the HasLab, you guys kind of did that fantastic four tease, right? Can you tell us anything in regards to timing of the project or when we should start saving our Marvel bucks or anything like that? Well, I, I've been trying to tell everybody, say, save, spend on your livelihood, spend on your family and your loved ones. But other than that, pre-order the Marvel Legends and then save up for this upcoming HasLab that's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, as far as timing, I think we mentioned in a couple other interviews that um, in August is when we're planning on first shipping out like the Sentinel. And so okay. before that timing, uh, we will be able, you will know what the HasLab is and uh, we'll be able to launch it uh, before that timing. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was one of the other questions I was going to say regarding the HasLab Sentinel is when can we expect them to ship? So around August, you think, or in and around that time? Yeah, so starting in August, a lot of, you know, there were over 20,000 pieces globally, which is which is astounding. And a lot yeah. of people ordered multiples. So I think the, the Pulse team and the whole like logistics aspect of that is figuring out how to do that but we we do plan to start in august hopefully hopefully you get yours and and one is happy in, in that month but it might take a little longer you know you never quite know like hopefully no ships are stuck in canals or something like that you know oh my god right yeah that's <laughs> the fact that we could end yeah. the world by a ship being stuck in the suez canal is uh amazing to me it goes to show how far we've come as humans <laughs> as far as the sentinel um has there been any snags in the road i mean i i love that photo of ryan that i had put on my instagram of him holding the box i mean that thing is ginormous but is any anything that went like a lot easier than expected or any things that you were like oh that's not going to work or anything to that degree for the uh for the sentinel project 
I think on the, the I think the two hiccups on production side, were, and I wouldn't I wouldn't say hiccups is the right word, but the the two biggest challenges were one creating the deco because that was something that was like right at the very beginning of the pandemic, mm-hmm. and while like Brian said, we were shifting to digital means that was a real challenge because it was such a massive thing and we knew that it had to be on point because we knew it was going to be such an expensive item it's like and if we're not going to be at comic-con and you're not going to see this thing in person you're going to have to put all your faith in the visuals and that put a lot of extra stress on the the development teams to try to figure that out and that was a real painful learning curve to do something that big for for deco and then just for development, the engineering was really challenging, uh, more so than a normal figure, because we've talked about this before, you know, little guys like this, there's only so much torque that you put on these joints and they, you know, they move. But when the thing is 26 inches tall, the leverage for moving those arms and legs can snap easier. So there was a lot of extra time that the engineering department, uh, both in the US as well as in HFE, had to really work to make sure that the joints were going to hold all the poses that you guys want to put it in, hold the weight of the figure itself, hold the weight of the figure holding other figures, you know, <laughs> for shoulders and, and torso articulation. So there was a lot of engineering challenges uh, that uh, the team uh, was working on and, and continues to work on as we get into the final stages of it. I, I just think, you know, based on what you guys have shown and everything, very excited to finally have that thing. It's going to be master mold for me and all the little sentinels that I've accumulated throughout the years will be the Sentinels, but uh, no, very excited to have that. I got a little spot on my shelf already. Nice and vertical. That's what I like about the <laughs> Sentinel. It's not Unicron. It's not the big sail barge. It's nice up and down. So <laughs> I have to tell you guys, uh, we'll kind of wrap it up with this question, but you know, I asked people to write in and there was close to about 700 questions people wrote in wanting, you know, Marvel Legends team. There were a lot of when's this character, when's that, but they really asked a lot about you guys in the sense of like how well you guys work together. Uh, You guys have become like the Marvel Trinity in that sense and more questions of like, why do you guys work so well together? Are you guys friends in real life? Are you work friends? Does Ryan call you up in the middle of the night with an idea? You know, how does the dynamic really work so well in terms of your guys' team? Who wants to take this one? Who wants to start? <laughs> I'll, I'll just start with that. It's, yeah, we're the three who are lucky enough to just be on camera the most, but it's really like <laughs> a whole team effort. We've got guys who who don't like to be on camera. That's their choice. And we've got other guys like Tony and, and Ben. Ben did, ben did that one really funny Pulse video, which is one of my favorite moments of filming the the blindfold Build-A-Figure Build challenge the between Ben and Oh, Tony. yeah. Those. <laughs> like my favorite thing. Uh so yeah, no, it's it's a huge it's a huge undertaking just on like not even on the the Marvel side and our partners in HFE, but like the Marvel team in Rhode Island. Back in the in the good old days, we used to all sit sit in the same area kind of and, and have <laughs> meetings. So yeah, I mean it's it's a village of people. And and what's great about the Marvel team in particular, I think, is consistency with it. Engineering, design, packaging have have all been together like for many 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 years. Like I think when Hasbro probably still Hasbro got the Marvel license. In the mid 2000s, those guys have been working on it, and then I was fortunate to join, you know, a couple a couple years back, and then Dan um, coming a little more recently. But you know, we we've got some good good momentum and a lot of built-in expertise over the years, and I think also just a true fandom for for Marvel movies, comics, toys, trading cards, you know, what have <laughs> everything. When are you guys gonna pack in the pogs? I'm telling you, bring the pogs back. I'm not gonna let that go. I think I think we it also comes from our relationship together was bonded over the fact that we genuinely love the Marvel IP and we love toys. Um, there's a lot of amazing, talented teams at Hasbro, uh, hands down. You know, some of the best and most talented and passionate people. But I think. The, the, the connection that we have for our brand, it's like if you put any of one of us on, on a different brand, we could obviously could do the job and we'd be fine. But this is our home. This yeah. is our family. You know, it's like in, when you're around these people so much day in and day out, you don't always get along. But we've got multiple chat columns on our phones that we just text each other bullshit all the time. <laughs> things that we're thinking about or things that we enjoy or things that <laughs> piss us off or things that we see from 
outside and we don't, honestly, we don't actually get together an awful lot outside of work. Ryan and I share a love for uh, professional wrestling. So we'll talk about that from time to time. And I, and, you know, we'll try to hit a show here or there, kind of a hermity guy. I'm very social when I have to be, when I'm working with team or I'm talking to you guys, or I go to the shows. Uh, I love that. And I really love feeding off the energy of a, a live crowd. But if I'm not in that situation, I'm the guy who's sitting in the corner of a room, just kind of on my comic book stack, just kind of reading books or something. And just, you know, like, Hey, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. you know, outside of my window, I don't, it's not something I enjoy. So I don't really, we don't go out and hang out very much even before the pandemic, but we do chat all the time through messaging just to kind of keep in touch and, uh, and, yeah. and make sure that we're challenging each other and giving each other crap when we need to, uh, because every one of us comes from a different perspective, which is great about our team. And we all have a different piece of Marvel lore that brought us into this. That's what makes us, I don't know. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think we're the, the best team running. And I love working with these two idiots and all of the other, uh, <laughs> team members that you know we that you guys see on screen and and off it's like i i don't know i love my team and i'm hoping that this is the team that i'm with and i hope these guys don't elevate and go somewhere else on me that's you guess what you gotta, you gotta watch marketers man see marketers you know they got something <laughs> they got a few wires uh loose up crafty there. yeah crafty. They're, always, they're always looking for that you know next uh that next great <laughs> adventure which i can appreciate but i'm very selfish and I don't want to lose either of those two uh, gentlemen or, you know, a lot of the other people on our team because we've just, we work so well together um, through all of our dysfunctions and we're a weird working family. Yeah, I, I just wanted to hop on and just, you know, echo everything that they've said. Um, I just want to also add that like Dwight and the other people on the development side, they have such a high work ethic. Like Dwight is working on like hundreds of figures a year. That's why Ryan and I will text each other at midnight too and be like, can you just check this? Like, so our team works incredibly hard, but at the same time, we love, we love what we're doing and we just feel really honored to be part of this team to work together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I, I think if we hated each other, you could probably see, you know, whether it's <laughs> in an interview or like on a live stream, us going at it, but uh, we genuinely like being in each other's company. I think one of the things that, you know, going back to an earlier question about, you know, the pandemic and its effect, one of the best parts about this job was always just seeing, you know, engineering or Dwight come to our office and be like bouncing ideas. And so that's what I miss. But uh, yeah, th this team is amazing. I'm just so honored to, you know, be a part of it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, there's That's shared awesome. love of, of Marvel. There's, you know, the our engineer Dwight and Dan are like big soccer fans, which I'm completely oblivious to. So they'll chat that. Dwight and I are, are wrestling fans. And so we, we have our little sort of um, sub interest group, groups as it may be, in addition to everything Marvel. But I think also working on a on a partner brand, on a, on a big license, uh, working with Disney, it's, it's, you know, it's intense. There, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of business priorities uh, coming at you from every direction. So it, it's kind of, it's stressful. I mean, to be honest with you, but we do love it. And then also just with how the business has grown since, since I've been on in 2015 now, uh, more and more figures every year. I think when things are challenging and when you also as a team accomplish things like a HasLab, a huge HasLab, who would have thought, right? Like then you, you get even closer and you wanna, wanna see what's next. And um, we've, we've got a good thing going. So hopefully uh, we, we can keep it that way. I agree. I think don't change anything. Keep making those figures that uh, we love to purchase. A year's worth of uh, hugs and high fives uh, once I actually get to see uh, everybody in person. So, <laughs> Fingers crossed for like Comic-Con, maybe at the end of the year, but I'm thinking next year. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, always a pleasure, you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time and answering these questions and just going to town on all the little details we love to hear about all these crazy toys that we love. So thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the coverage. I go to you for my news on all the latest drops. I need it. I need it. Oh yeah. You saw the one yesterday. We got to talk about other stuff too later. Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Ryan, Dan, Dwight, thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, see ya. Bye. See ya.